Great. So we are live now, and I'm sure we'll have a few stragglers joining us both here in person with our wonderful audience in the Siena Art Institute presentation room. And of course, we'll start to have some people online seeing the notification so they can join us for our online streaming viewers as well. Um, but thank you so much to everyone for joining us this evening for tonight's conversation with um, Serena, who is not only here as our presenter this evening, but is also um, teaching our art history classes um, together with our partner institution, the Siena School for Liberal Arts. Uh, so this evening's presentation is a chance to get to know a bit more about her background, not only as an art historian, but also her recent curatorial projects. Um, so certainly we very much welcome your questions and comments and we'll save time at the end of the presentation to respond to questions and comments both from our folks here in person as well as for our online viewers who are joining us feel free to write any questions in the comment section and we can save time at the end of the talk to respond. Uh, but it's very much my honor to introduce tonight's speaker, Serena, whose research um, has focused on the use of art as an element of identity and the function of possibilities of representation. She received her PhD in contemporary art history from the universities of Florence, Pisa, and Siena in 2020. For curatorial, educational, and residency projects, she has collaborated with the Palazzo Strozzi Foundation, the Strozzina Center for Contemporary Culture in Florence, with the Luigi Pecci Center for Contemporary Art in Prato, with the Casa Masaccio Museum, the Center for Contemporary Art in San Giovanni Valdarno, and with the Virgilio Sieni National Dance Production Center, for which she was responsible for the Pia Palazzina Indiano Arte in Florence. So again, we very much welcome your question. Yeah. Thank you so much, Lisa. Thank you for being decided to uh, be here and have uh, this like moment of sharing. I, when they asked me to uh, like explain my practice and um, have a little talk, it was like uh, saying, what, what should I say to them? Uh, my work is basically uh, writing, in, uh, figuring out uh, exhibition, what's, what I have to, to say to them, what could be interesting for them. So I decided to, just to bring to you some of my experience that, and put them together just to have um, a rough view of my ten, last 10 years of work uh, and somehow mixing together uh, art historian uh, part and curatorial practice, as Lisa said before. Um, like my, my art historian background is definitely what defines me uh, like more and what defines uh, the work that I do. Also, my curatorial practice is infused by the uh, art historian practice. So what I'm like always trying to do is to mix the two elements. I'm not... Um, so what I'm trying to explain, it's like also like my view in the curatorial aspect, defining my own path in it and trying to also like show what a curator can do beside this like writing and curator audio uh, aspect in making shows or whatever um to me what is interesting it's always trying to uh do cultural work uh, at the it seems stupid to say but at the moment curatorial aspect of the work are mixing a lot with uh like money and the uh, art market but uh i consider myself extremely uh, lucky because uh, um at the most of the time i have the opportunity to work for um exhibition venues and museums that were very concerned in the aspect of social attitude uh openness to uh to an open crowd and most of them having no tickets to pay to enter so this helped me 
to uh, convey an idea of an art as part of the uh, social uh, sphere and uh, in a way to propose something that could be open to like everybody and have a and, and have different like layers of understanding. Um, in this like big presentation that uh, I will like try to enter in in my practice. So like the first part is dedicated to my uh, studies as an art historian connected to my researches in the time of the university. I started working on uh, little magazines for my MA uh, while I was like uh, considering just uh, one of it, uh, the name is Broom, uh, and it was printed in, uh, in Europe by Americans between 1921 and 1924. Uh, from the research related to this art literature uh, magazines, <coughs> um, in which like the focus was to both like trying to uh, push American culture and mixing together with the uh, European atmosphere, I uh, started to develop an idea, the idea of having a more like wider view on this uh, on this movement, and I had the chance to be part of a PhD, a three-year courses um, by the um, University of Florence and, uh, and Pisa that gave me the chance to be also in the United States and pursue my research in many <coughs> institutions. So in this way, I gathered together a group of uh, around like 20 magazines, uh, and lighting like the, um, the path of them, and lighting some characters, and especially what they were trying to do in putting together this two world. Uh, the focus was mainly on um, time-based, so my con I considered just uh, magazines that were like printed in between the 20s and the beginning of the 30s uh, in a very, very specific period of time in which uh, US and America was just out from the First World War that was like showing the um, economical power and also political one since uh, they um, being part for the first time of a um, world conflict and uh, the try of the uh, American cultural uh, milieu to find uh, a way that was representative of America. Uh, of their soil, that is um, an important word in, in this moment. Uh, mixing together with the will to um, brought, uh, bring in uh, America what was made in Europe and mixing up so with the uh, cultural milieu that was in Paris, but both also in, in Berlin. There was um, <clears throat> an important city in terms of connection with the Russian um, avant-garde. So it's, it was a, is a long <laughs> expl uh, explanation and it's a long uh, and very detailed part. I, if somebody wants to know a little bit more about it, I will open to, uh, to question, of course. And unfortunately, my book, because I had the chance to uh, print my um, dissertation, uh, is just in Italian. But if anybody, but I have, uh, I have an essay in English. And if anybody is interested in these themes, I'm open to every kind of question. So this is for saying that my um, art historian practice is mixing together like cultural aspect, literature and art history. So mixing it up to try to convey the idea that art is not just only uh, an, an aspect of, uh, of representation, but it's part of a more like complex um, situation. What is interesting in this research is the fact that art, especially for America, was used to uh, identify the role of uh, of the country in terms of social aspect and, communi uh, and communication aspect. Uh, just for giving you some ideas, uh, those magazines are fulfilled of images, both of the industry of America. Here, here we have um, 
an image taken from uh, the Little Review, one of the most well-known magazines at the time, showing the uh, giant generator in construction. So the magnificent uh, and uh, greatness of the American industry and power, or uh, the fact that this connected to uh, electricity is also like conveying other aspects uh, of political aspect of it, and in contrast and in dialogue in this slide with a work by uh, Louis Lozowick in 1923, uh, what we could define as a precisionist artist, but it was also the one that created a bridge between America and the art of, um, of the Russian, of the, um, of the Russian art. Uh, Lozovic, in fact, uh, was part of this uh, group of exiled, as they uh, named themselves, and it was the one that was able to translate from, uh, from Russian. It was Ukrainian, let's say nowadays Ukrainian, um, and so it was an important uh, bridge for all the uh, information uh, arriving from Moscow and mixing with the American group with, for example, Elie Siski and other um, Russian artists, Ivan Puni and, and others, bringing not only the aspect, that theoretical aspect, but also mixing together his own heart with those um, elements that were specific of the um, Euro international constructivism that was rising at the time. <laughs> if one on one side we have this um, like strength in uh, the image of uh, industrialism, gigantes and let's say also money. Uh, at the end uh, of this decade, what is happening that um, the group uh, in, uh, in Europe is mixing together with surrealism and new idea. Uh, they are like spreading in, in Europe, opening up to a more um, wide representation of the America. They mix together um, anthropology, uh, knowledge of a, a sort of mythical past, and also the culture that was arriving uh, throughout the work of Karl Einstein, uh, um, a German Hebrew um, theorist and critical um, art critic. Uh, there was interest both in the art of Africa, but also in a new idea of art. There was more interest in, in representation, mixing with uh, natural aspects uh, that were bringing back, to get, um, back in interest what was um, German expressionist and symbolism. So, uh, for example, here we have two um, pictures taken from uh, Transition, one of another of these magazines. Um, in one of like it, it, in two uh, images, they are part of, let's say, the last uh, number of Transition before coming up again in, in the 30s. Uh, a very like wide and thick uh, number in which they put together all they did in the um, like before that moment and mixing as and expressing all the interest in the anthropology showing as particularly art from uh, South and Central America and mix it together with uh, photography. Here we have, uh, for example, one uh, shot from uh, Edward Weston. So beside my interest in, uh, in modernism and in this um, aspect related to the American art, I have an, uh, an interest in what is happened in, in Florence in, in after the Second World War. I had the chance uh, for a cooperation with uh, Strozzina, so the Strozzi Foundation, to match like, 
around 12 years ago at the work of Luciana Maioni. Uh, she's a photographer, but let's say more probably she is an artist uh, that used photography. That's <laughs> um, a slight difference. Uh, she also has been involved in many interesting uh, aspect of the cultural life of Florence, especially she, uh, she's she been part of the Zona No Profit uh, group. Uh, Zona No Profit was an artist-run space uh, in Florence that is, is partially still alive under the name of Base. Um, but at the time, was gathering together uh, the most interesting artists of the um, Florentine scene, mixing together what was uh, remaining of the minimalist and conceptualist and the uh, transformation towards a more, um, what, what we, we can like name as transavanguardia, but like, let's say, as Zona is pointed to, uh, together uh, is it sort of like bridges of passage between uh, an attention to a very specific and conceptual heart, um, looking especially on what was happening in America and uh, in in Europe, but. Uh, then like trying to have a role in the city and this role and a part of it, also Mario Mariotti was part of it, that if somebody knows about Mario Mariotti, knows how he was interested in the cultural and social aspect of art, um, and especially what he did for Florence, um, both um, this combination, it's like a bridge that then bring to, uh the late 80s and to the 80s and a dismantling of this word but a new uh more like personal reflections uh interested in uh, in the antique and um and tracing a new path with the past what is interesting of luciana uh, it's the fact that she has um <clears throat> a huge archive uh, mixing together documentation of the work uh, of the period of Zona and uh, his own work. Uh, so, thanks to her friendship, we were together in several times. We decided uh, two years ago to try to resettle her archive that was more a collection of elements and trying to. Uh, define her own path uh, within the art history. So trying to divide uh, his documentation work, documentative work, and its own work. It's a thing that it's sometimes uh, combined together uh, because um, after the 80s, China started to work constantly in relation to the work of other artists, especially artists from the past. But what, here, what we are um, on our view, we have just for uh, introduct to you what we are viewing. Uh, on the first image on the left, we have Luciana that is talking with um, Chiari, uh, um, an artist from uh, the, um, the Florentine area, but he has wide well known for is like being part of Fluxus. And on the other side, we have um, the group um, with which Luciana was working at the beginning of the 70s uh, inside the space of Zona. So uh, both the views are showing where Zona is. Zona and now Baza is a room, a tiny uh, little room in, um, in, in Florence, in the center of Florence, in the area of San Nicolo. Um, I'm still like there. <laughs> um, and here we have some uh, images of the work that she did uh, by herself. So this is one of his first uh, work that he did in 1966. <laughs> uh, uh, in which we have this idea that she like 
uh, have some connection uh, with um, um, fluxus and the idea of time and uh, conceptual heart. Uh, these are like three uh, shots from the series, 20 shots in 20 minutes um, that he took in Venice while they were coming back from the Venice Biennale of the 1976. Uh, she worked on... <laughs> on the idea of a narrative movement, of course, also deciding to, to, uh, to um, colorate and vibrate all the shots in, in a blue that here is quite different from the real one. Uh, but it was uh, in uh, a reference to the image that was used by the touring club. So uh, sort of uh, guide for like travelers uh, that was massive at the time. Uh, so if here we have still some um, interest in both like time and constructive uh, a narrative that it's not so personal, after that we can see that she moves like deeply into a more kind of oniric and um, an expressive um, interest. Uh, this is a shot from the series Pygmalione. Uh, the negative is from the 1984. Uh, I, I'm adding the aspect that she, the negative is from that day because the practice of Luciana consider all her archives still today. So it could happen that for a show that she is having now, she take she decided to work on negatives that she did uh, 20 years ago and try to um, work on them with a new view using, as in this case, uh, elements to uh, unlight just a part of the image or having um, post-production, let's say, that transformed the negative. In this case, as a uh, peculiar of her practice, most of the post-production is uh, did on, on the negative and both on the positive. So not working with uh, Photoshop, but decided to do it like um, on a manual basis. And here, uh, I Choose another um, photo just to uh, underline another uh, time the aspect that she is uh, an artist that decides to work with photography. Here we have, for example, an installation that we did together for the presentation of her work and for making a series of um, studio visits in her uh, charming house in Florence, and she, where she decided to print on a big, big, big scale one of um, one shot that she did uh, before this, uh, we did it like almost 10 years ago. But um, yes, what is interesting from, uh, from this work is like mixing together what I can do as, a, uh, as an art historian in her archive, for example, we have a mix a mix of elements, most of them have no dates. So most of the time we spend time to try to identify what could be the date of it and, and repositioning the story of her work inside the macro scale of the uh, history of art. So that's, that was the main uh, work in this and in her archive. We finished just a part of it, but that's uh, what we are like trying to uh, to laugh to to the past, having some information that could be uh, worthy for other excavation. What is also interesting and important in my part is also to try to uh, interview her as much. As I, as I can, identify not only her uh, way of working, but also identify all the people that are represented here in this selection that I made. We just uh, saw images of nature, sculpture, and so on, not focusing on the, uh, on the portrait aspect of her work. But this is another aspect, of course. We uh, make it possible to recognize the people they are in has, for example, in the documentation of Zona, let's 
uh, other people, myself, another uh, art historian, able to start from that point and then discover another like connection between her work or the work that has been exhibited at, Z uh, at Zona at the time. Um, so um, just uh, a very, very uh, fast view on uh, other like curatorial aspect. I'm going to show you some images uh, of the of some work and show that I uh, collaborated with during uh, two periods of time. One is the one related to the Museum Casa Masaccio, uh, that is a museum located in San Giovanni Valdarno, so in between Florence and Arezzo, just for giving uh, an idea to, uh, to you that maybe don't know exactly the geographical aspect of Tuscany. Is a peculiar museum uh, since it has a collection, um, an historical collection, but it's uh, almost focusing on contemporary art and opening up to uh, young artists. So, and uh, while I was wor working with them, we had a lot of residency projects, also international ones. So what it was interesting to do, it was trying to uh, con connect them both with the collection that was telling about an important part of cultural part of the town. It's a small town, uh, San Giovanni Valdarno, I think around, um, 50,000 inhabitants, just for like, randomly uh, giving uh, information, that in uh, 1968 hosted a very important uh, show um, in part of Premio Masaccio. And Premio Masaccio, so the Masaccio Prize was a prize that was um, Institute um, after the Second World War. It was quite common after the, uh, the war to have those prizes. They were like able to make a photograph of the um, artistic moment of the nation. Uh, so the Masaccio Prize, because uh, San Giovanni Valdarno is the place in which Masaccio was born. <laughs> Uh, and the house in which the museum is, uh, has its like, uh, exhibition spaces is supposed to be the house in which Masaccio lived when he was young. Remember that Masaccio died at 25, so <laughs> very short period of time. <laughs> um, uh, in, inside uh, the sixth edition of the uh, Premio Masaccio, the last one was also the most interesting one because it was bringing for one of the first time in, in Italy and in a, uh, in a context that was a periphery one, uh, the language of the new rising artist of Arte Povera and uh, radical um, um, architects. So in the collection, they are still like visible the columns, colonne by uh, Alighiero Boetti, because uh, he wrote them at the show and he left there. And on the other side, we have uh, the image of the installation did by Gianni Pattina, an architect from Florence, uh, part of the um, radical architecture movement. Uh, that spread out in in Florence between the uh, end of the 16th uh, of the uh, of the 60s and the beginning of the 70s. That was in contact with the land art in uh, America, for example, especially uh, Gianni Pattina, who spent a lot of uh, time in America, also doing some interesting. Um, work in it. Uh, here uh, in uh, San Giovanni, he decided to do this installation, closing all the arches of the uh, Palazzo d'Arnolfo uh, with this pattern uh, that was like silvery and mirroring silver and, um, and black in the idea of reducing the 3D of the uh, of the building into just a frame, into uh, a drawing. So 
uh, in the uh, in the culture in the imaginary uh, of the of San Giovanni, we have this important moment that the museum is trying to uh, make like popular and shared by all people. Starting from this moment to allowed new artists to have his own path. In this idea, I've been like part of um, one uh, residency project that was bringing a group of Indian artists in San Giovanni Valdarno. And we ha I had the occasion to work with Prabhakar Pachbuta that last year was part of the uh, Venice Biennale. So uh, it was interesting uh, to, <laughs> to see him uh, back in the Biennale. Um, and the idea that we have both, I was working with um, an Indian curator, uh, the uh, intention was to blend in together um, the cultural aspect uh, of San Giovanni Valdarno mixing to, uh, together with, the, um, with his Indian uh, roots. Uh, he found the connection in, uh, in the mines, in the miners, since the area of San Giovanni was a place of excavation uh, until 1990s. Uh, so um, he decided to create an installation that was mixing together sculpt uh, sculpture and drawing, but also uh, work from the collection. What you saw in the, in the little image, the three uh, paintings were painting taken from the collection, uh, telling um, the story of San Giovanni Valdarno throughout the uh, image realized by artists. And he had it to, to this, his own view uh, of um, uh, of a mine, uh, in this case uh, for like a marble one, because he had a trip in Carrara, but connected together with, in, in, in an ideal way with his own uh, country. It was coming from a part of, uh, of India uh, um, with a lot of concern because of miners and of coal miners. So all the family of Prabhakar Pachpute was were uh, miners, so they transform uh, this concern in, into um, a kind of international message, a uh, universal message uh, that is well uh, reducted in the title of the piece. It was never mine, but now it is mine. This idea of continue conquer of the land, of the, of the goods of the earth, uh, he uh, creates um, like a, a double link between his concern on the um, uh, on the excavation, both in India and in uh, in San Giovanni Valdarno. Another work that I supported <laughs> was the one of Irene Lupi that maybe <laughs> uh, some of you knows. Um, we had the chance to work together. Uh, quite a lot in San Giovanni, and this was one of the work that we uh, kind of conceived together. It was part of, um, uh, of a project that was uh, bringing in San Giovanni Baldarno uh, artist students from Germany, uh, and we decided to add some Italian artists to try to, um, since the idea of the uh, German professor was the one to have a view on the idea of Europe. So, uh, and identity seen throughout the idea of Europe. So, um, our idea was to mix up also with Italian artists, but Italian artists with a wide range of nationality, let's say. So, <laughs> among the Italian group, there was like three Chinese students at the Academy of Art in Florence, uh, one um, artist with uh, Albanian roots, and Irene Lupi, that is just from Livorno, but it's okay. <laughs> Uh, and Livorno and uh, Lupi conceived this uh, work that was like partially an installation and a performance while uh, Irene uh, is, is, a, is around here. Maybe we are going to get the, um, 
the video of the uh, of the performance that was did just once. Uh, but the idea she kind of like create um, a medicine, a pharmacy for helping people to um, be more European. So <laughs> forcing them has a <laughs> and imagining like the uh, the transformation into uh, an European identity and as something that could be possible just with the use of something external with a uh, with a poison, let's say. Uh, I don't want to bother you too much, so I'm going in the next phase of my work that it was like the last one, uh, the one that I um, passed in uh, in the Centro Nazionale di Produzione della Danza Virgilio Siani, so this uh, National Center for dance production uh, of um, Virginia Siani, uh, for whom I was the uh, responsible of two uh, um, spaces, like one is the Galleria Isolotto and the other one is Pia, Palazzina Indiano Arte, and it is the building that you are seeing in this uh, picture that is located in a particular part of Florence, is at the end of the Cascine uh, Garden. So, um, it's still in the center of Florence because the uh, Cascina Garden are supposed to be part of the uh, antique part of Florence, but they are also at the borders of the city. Uh, it's uh, Cascine are randomly are a kind of an island created by uh, the Arno. So on one side, we have uh, Arno River passing by. On the other side, uh, the, the place is signed by uh, the river Mugnone. So uh, uh, Pia, it's really at the end of it. Uh, and uh, the, uh, the name Indiano uh, is um, given to this area because because it was the one in which uh, an Indian prince was built in 1860, randomly, because it was the encounter of two rivers and has uh, the Hindu uh, religion wanted to spread the, uh, the ashes into the convergency of two rivers. That is why uh, we still have this name Indian, also Indian inside this part of, uh, of the garden and also in some way gives the name to this palace that was the palace supposed to be the one of the of the guardians of um of the, of the city since the river Arno was important for the transportation of goods inside and outside the city uh for taking taxes and um, guards were located there to control what was happening um now this uh palace is i concede has a place for um mixing part uh, of course being part of a, a center for uh, dedicated to dance and performance has um, residency project for um, performative artists uh, trying to work both inside and outside of the palace so mixing to the, together uh, the idea of nature and uh, concerned with body um, that I try to and I try to work with this two uh, like lines an idea in my curatorial uh, project and in terms of um, exhibition. Here in the image on, on the left we can see part of a show um, uh, th that was like talking about the body but I would like to show you more images about like two uh, show that I can see um, at the beginning of the last year uh, focusing on landscape. One was a personal show of Marco Pace, uh, the, the, mm, and we selected uh, a lot of um, 
a mix in part of his production. So uh, both drawing, painting, and, and he also did some uh, work for the occasion of the show, making a sort of uh, fast residency at, um, uh, at Pia, uh, with the idea of uh, showing uh, his proper ideas um, in terms of landscape that are mixing together like fantasy, uh, architecture, and um, and evaluation of uh, of nature. Uh, I'm showing you some uh, more views. So um, we decided to have a show that was like really dark. The name uh, was Ogni Pensiero Vola, Every uh, Thought Flight, that is um, what it's uh, written uh, in... In a, in a famous garden conceived during the humanist um, period. Um, and all the work were like trying to mix it together. Uh, the idea of nature has something that has a life um, while making disappear all the human aspect. Uh, nature in the art of Marco Pace is able to create architectures um, and creating like shelters for others. Uh, so creating a view that was underlying as in the painting that on um, with blue tones that we are here, um, that is very like fragile uh, because here was kind of glassy uh, imagination, but also uh, mixing to, together terrific and sublime. Uh, like the show on the installative part was like very dark, just with uh, artificial illumination, uh, except for uh, this part here, even because there are like stairs to arrive. Uh, at this level, so it would be like difficult for people to arrive here. But that was the last moment in which people was able to see outside. It, it was an idea to um, stress out that everything was in the mind of Marco. So uh, we enter in a sort of a narrative part that was part of his own uh, imagination. It was not there. Uh, we were not connection, like string connection with the outside, but just have an idea of the outside and recede with the imaginary view. On the uh, opposite side, we, we did just uh, the opposite with the other artist, uh, with the show that followed the one of Marco Pace. There was another solo show by Enrico Tealdi. Uh, the name was Halos, and also with the name, we uh, stress out the idea of light and the the power of light to make able to uh, memorize um, things and uh, all the um, all the works that we put together were like more kind of um, descriptive on the idea of landscape but a landscape that was in this time more about like memories something that was imaginative but of a, a true experience so that was a kind of um, mixing, so, mm, like mirroring the, the two exhibitions uh, here. So he, it was possible to see just um, a little int of the uh, of the big canvas that he created. Um, the two rooms were uh, completely like. Um, inhabited by these two big canvases. They were made by old sheet that he put together and uh, depicted them uh, with a lot of, uh, of different techniques, of course. And it was like still very uh, visible, the fact that they were used, they were shit. So creating also with materials, the ideas of, uh, of memory and on the other side, um, being there in the room was like 
both possible to see this imaginative landscape and see the landscape outside the one created by the river Arno and see the lights coming through a bit. This was like the other room um, with a more kind of like detail um, landscape um, that, and more kind of like descriptive uh, landscape, but, but it was still this idea of being um, uh, of being illuminated by um, by the outside, and was also having um, the this work uh, was coming from a residency uh, that um, Enrico did in the Lake Maggiore, and the scene that he uh, portrayed uh, was a scene of a. Um, uh, of the encounter of Boccioni with a lady at the uh, the Lake Maggiore, and uh, and so in in this term we have this representation of a moment of the life that is like passing by, so creating a double link with the memory that remains in your mind, and there like still something you are reaching while you're uh, living beside that happy moment. So I think that I talk even too much. <laughs> There's um, a few questions that have already come in from our online viewers, but I don't know if our in-person audience maybe has some questions or we could, yes. I start? Sure, sure. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm very interested and I think the, the younger people behind me also First, how does one become a curator? And second, what does a curator do? Uh, for what you said, it seems that there is strong cooperation with artists. That surprised me. I thought the artist would supply the things and then the curator would decide how to put them in, in an exhibition. On the contrary, no, we cooperate. No, no, it's always a cooperation. It's always a cooperation, especially in terms of uh, conceiving a show. It's always a cooperation, both because on on the installative part, of course, there is always um, a dialogue between the two, uh, so the artist and and the curator. And one uh, and and when we talk about uh, shows that are coming from residency project. Most of the time, uh, uh, the work that is created, it's, all, it's always um, a work that mixed together all the experiences that have been uh, part of the residency project. So if a curator uh, follows uh, the residency, is going to give a twist to the work too, in some way. So no, they're not so divided. And some of these works were done because of the of the exhibition. Uh, and some of the things were yeah. somehow partly responsible for them. Um, just like um, the one next to the blue, uh, but I um I have picture if you want to see them later. Uh, I have more like straight kind of um, picture, but yes, it happens. It happens. Uh, in this case, with Marco, uh, we started to uh, select the, uh, the work that was part of the exhibition, um, working together with the title, mixing ideas on the path that we, we would, would like to uh, stress, and, and also both like, thematically and both for his ability of working in different technique. And so it came out the idea to create two works, uh, especially for the exhibition. And the two works were um, influenced by uh, being at the Palazzina, for example, the one that you barely see. Uh, it is taking inspiration from like a view of the uh, of the of the garden. Uh, and the other one was a mixing of uh, like trying new technique and pushing toward a direction that seems to us interesting in his work that was like trying to go in a more abstractive way. So, yes, could happen. 
Yes, I don't have any more to ask. Don't really have to get these questions. Uh, I mean, for, I mean, not for once I know, and I'd like to have a confirmation for you. From you, is that uh, curators can can also have uh, in general can have also a very important responsibility within a museum or a cultural institutions. In the sense, are those who uh, decide. Uh, the, yeah. The who will, uh, yeah. Sure. Show who will, uh, okay. Like, uh, this this aspect has you and you were like asking what a curator like do. Um, it's um, it's complex, of course. Uh, in this, uh, every curator, if work in institution, has to blend his own idea with the requests of the institution. And the request of an institution can be many. Uh, in, in my terms, I, I was sometimes lucky uh, that I just to try to adopt like my view that was quite the same. But uh, in this case, there were like two places, not in the center of Florence, uh, looking to uh, a very kind of wide public. So the idea was to try to have works that could be uh, on a high level uh, for contemporary art of the moment, but still having not a too much conceptual attitude to be like more involving for people that are not strictly interested in uh, contemporary art. So they could have an emotional touch, could have other layers, that, that was the point. But other institutions have a more marketing question. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so mm -hmm. the request is try to make it as more public as possible. And of course, if the request is to make as more public as possible, you have to insert a work with an artist that you suppose can move public. In general, I think that uh, the, the figure of the curator is uh, pretty much a living figure in the art world uh, system. So it's, it's quite, uh, quite important. Of like course, <laughs> of course, but uh, it would be more interesting to say how the the, the figure of the curator is changing now, okay. uh, let's say. That's more the point uh, about uh, the now today. Um, uh, figures has Germano um, Celland and Achille Bonito Oliva in some way define like the new way of being curator, uh, but and um, in being able to create uh, their own like movements, defining them, working towards an idea of creating a market for them. Uh, nowadays, uh, the curator are a blend of it uh, in terms of being visible, but not as visible as them and trying to please every um, every part of the uh, of the artwork. So it's a it's um is an important uh, role, but it's also like a difficult one because it has the uh, necessity right. to talk with all the other uh, involved in the project. Thank you. We have um, a couple questions. Um, we had a few questions that came in from our online viewers, some of which I think you've already touched upon in your responses okay. to the other questions. Um, one was um, just reflecting back on your introduction of your art historical research. Um, and in fact, it's so interesting to see how uh, you're reflecting on how these magazines from the early 20th century were trying to capture different artistic responses to that particular historic era, and then to see how you're using your curatorial work to try and capture different artistic responses to this present contemporary era. And of course, your archive work spans many decades as you're tracking that. So really so fascinating <laughs> on many different points. But to return to the online question, um, 
which was um, asking in your research in the 1920s and 1930s, were you surprised by any of your findings? For example, did the America being presented in the art seem true to the world at that time or even prescient? Sort of a big question, but if something surprised you from your research into the art of that era? Uh, the most surprising aspect I think was And what was uh, interesting specifically was the fact that uh, I'm, I'm talking specifically to the exile group and none of the uh, magazines show any, one, any picture of the uh, African-American uh, part of this exile group. So that, that could be an answer maybe. <laughs> Questions of course, we can plan to continue the conversation over some snacks. I don't want to keep you all from our snacks, but we can um, maybe sign off for, with our um, online viewers. But thank you all so much for joining us both online and in person. And thank you most of all to Serena for this presentation. And it's great to know um, more about your curatorial work in this series of talks. We've had the chance, of course, to hear from uh, different artists, but to also hear from the curatorial perspective is really quite interesting. So thank you so much. Yes.